Hi, I'm Lily King. And I'm wildly honored to be here celebrating you all and your experiences at Girls Right Now. I wish so much I were there in person to see you and meet each one of you and to hear every one of your voices. There is one voice among you that I have had the pleasure of hearing, and that's the voice of Zakia Singletary. I received a piece of her beautiful writing and a question that she'd like me to answer. My question for you is that there's a quote that reads, once a writer falls in love with you, you can never die. How have the people that have enriched your life over the years affected your characters and your storyline? If a writer falls in love with you, you can never die. People don't talk about the love that's necessary to write. A writer falls in love with everything. A writer is so in love with the world that it's not simply enough to be in it. We need to embrace it and lavish it with words. And by love, I don't mean worship or blindness or even glorification. If you ever really love someone, it's complicated. And you get hurt and you cause hurt. To love the world is to be hurt by it sometimes. Love is playing, paying close, close attention. Love is cranking your heart open like a nine foot wide umbrella and feeling every emotion. Writing a page is an act of love. You love yourself enough to hear your voice and you love the reader enough to let them hear it and you love the world enough to really lay it bare. If you're feeling devastated and wrecked and undone by this world right now and it's chronic, systemic, centuries old, institutionalized racism and injustice and murder. It's because you have loved other elements of this world, the parts that are good and the people that are good and the moments that have been safe and surprising and nourishing and full of love. And you will, and we all will use our voices, our words, our characters, our visions to battle the wrong and the vile and remake this world. So to Zikia's question, how have the people that have enriched your life over the years affected your characters and storylines? Writing about your truest emotions sometimes means writing directly about the people who have affected them. I had a funny thing happen to me in high school. I took a creative writing class and after a few really bad stories that read more like scenes from TV shows like Little House on the Prairie and the Waltons, my teacher told me, write what you know. It was the mantra of that class, write what you know. So I started writing stories about unpopular girls pining for boys who never looked their way. My teacher liked my sentences, but often said I was staying on the surface. And it was true. I had a lot going on inside of me that I did not want to examine. The class ended in December, and by the next spring, the literary magazine put out a call for stories. I wrote and I handed in a story that did not stay on the surface. It was about my very broken family, my father's breakdown, his suicide attempt, his addiction, and a lot of the stuff I had felt over that long Massachusetts winter. The teacher, who was the faculty advisor for the fiction magazine, gave it right back to me. It was too personal, he said, for them to publish. He didn't want to make people feel uncomfortable. So I got the message loud and clear, write what you know, write what you know, but do not write everything you know. Later, I read what James Baldwin said about that same question. He said, in my mind, the effort to become a great novelist simply involves attempting to tell as much of the truth as one can bear, and then a little more. It took me 30 years to break that high school taboo and start to write the truth of my emotions about my father and about everything else. In that spirit, in the spirit of truth and love and strength of voice, I'd like to end with Zacchaeus' piece, Fallen Angels. For 400 years, you kept us enslaved, raped us, beat us, tainted us and killed us, yet somehow you are the ones that fear us. You see my skin color as a weapon and shoot it every chance you get, because even though we are unarmed, we will always be viewed as armed with the melanin embedded in our skin. You stop every little brown boy with a hoodie on his head, racially profile every little brown girl with afros as big as your ego. You refuse to look within and see that you are the monsters you so desperately are trying to run away from. You created this social construct called race to identify my blackness as darkness and your whiteness as pure. 
To you, we are equal, as long as we don't commit a crime, no matter how small, then we become slaves of the state again with the 13th Amendment. You have jail cells ready for little black boys as soon as they are suspended. They are five times more likely to go to jail than white men. You're sitting in Albany collecting the money, waiting for them to become another statistic. And I fear for all seven of my brother's lives and pray for all of my sisters that a picture of us will not end up under the next hashtag Black Lives Matter. A mother is living without her child, wondering if she hadn't let them out, would they be here? A child is without a life that barely ever began, now left to be six feet beneath. They said they want justice for little black kids without ever mentioning those little black kids. This is for the victims who didn't get the justice they deserved. Thank you, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Freddie Gray, Ayanna Stanley Jones, Terrence Crutcher, Kimani Gray, Philando Castile, Sandra Bland. We are beautiful, deserving of life, and we matter. So does your story. May you all rest in heaven. Sincerely, the girl who will never stay quiet again. Fallen Angels is a beautiful, powerful piece of writing with a huge flare of hope shot up at the end. The girl who will never stay quiet again. May that be every one of you and all the rest of us too. Stay safe and stay loud. Thank you so much.